Focus in News. ASEAN Leaders Summit begins without Myanmar representative. Southeast Asian leaders began their annual summit without Myanmar military leader Ning Oh Leng, who overthrew the civilian government on February 1st in a rare exclusion for the regional grouping usually known for a non-interference. Myanmar's foreign minister said it will only agree to its head of state or ministerial representative, indicating its seat would be empty at the summit. The U.S. Embassy in Brunei said on the agenda for Tuesday opening day were three separate meetings between the ASEAN leaders and representatives of the United States, China and South Korea. Joe Biden will lead the U.S. delegation for the ASEAN-United States Summit. ASEAN Group's members are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. U.S. woman guilty of role in Bali's with case murder case completely free from prison. Heather Mack, a U.S. woman who convicted over her role in murdering her mother on the Indonesian resort island of Bali, was released on October 29 from a prison under remission. Wearing a shirt and jeans overlaid by an orange vest, Mack was escorted by immigration officials to an immigration detention center in Denpasar, where she awaits deportation to the U.S. Max's sentence had been shortened by 34 months, according to the head of the prison, and walks free after serving seven years of a 10-year sentence. Heather is completely free with remission. She gets remission according to the presidential decree from the President Joko Widodo, general or a special remission. She got remission for 34 months or equal to two years and she has been in prison for seven years and two months. She was a little shocked, sad, confused and afraid, but we always gave her encouragement. Come on, Heather, you must be like Heather in prison. She is a good person, because inside she always does coaching, she prays in church, because she is a Christian, and she is our icon for fashion shows in prison. Meg was arrested with her then-boyfriend Tommy Schaeffer in 2014, after hotel staff discovered the body of Meg's mother, Sheila Von Wies Meg, in an abandoned suitcase at taxi, Schaeffer is serving 18-year sentence for murder. Chinese Premier said Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership will reach a threshold of entry into force soon. Chinese Premier Li Qixian has said that Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership will reach a threshold of entry into force soon, and countries need to hasten work for it to take effect as early as possible. Li made the statement while attending the 24th ASEAN Plus China, Japan and Republic of Korea summit via video link. Li said countries need to hasten work for the agreement to take effect as early as possible and continue to advance free trade and pursue higher level integration. China will host the capacity building programs such as training of human resources and experience in sharing on regional comprehensive economic partnership implementation for interested governments, business chambers or associations and companies from ASEAN countries, said Li. Adding that, China will also organize a symposium for high standard implementation of the RCEP next year and welcomes the active participation of all sides. The RCEP is a free trade agreement among the Asia-Pacific nations of Australia, Brunei, Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Japan, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, New Zealand, the Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, Thailand and Vietnam. The 15 member countries account for about 30% of the world's population and 30% of global GDP as of 2020, making it biggest trade bloc in history. The RCEP was signed on November 15, 2020 at the virtual ASEAN summit hosted by Vietnam and will take effect 16 days after it has been ratified by at least 16 ASEAN and 3 non-ASEAN signatories. ASEAN member agreed to upgrade strategy ties with China.
The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, said it has agreed with China to upgrade their relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership a day after reaching a similar deal with Australia. Australia's clinching over the elevated partnership was a symbolic win for Canberra in getting ahead of China in securing the first such deal with the Southeast Asia region, which has become a strategic battleground between Beijing and Washington. Over the past three days, we have also made progress the announcement was made by Brunei Sultan Hassan al bolkia during a news conference at which he was asked about Myanmar's future attendance of ASEAN events after its junta chief Ming Holeng, who led a coup in Myanmar, was excluded from a series of ASEAN last week. Substantial and mutually beneficial relationships going forward. Ming Oholeng was sidelined over his failure to implement that consensus which has agreed with ASEAN in April, committing to ending hostilities, start dialogue and facilitate humanitarian aid and mediation efforts by a special ASEAN envoy. Afghans getting worse and most people live below the poverty line. Kabul residents said the country's economic crisis is getting worse and most people live below the poverty line since the Taliban takeover. The situation will become more critical if the international community and economically powerful countries do not help Afghanistan and its poor people, especially these countries that speak of human rights, equality and justice. Millions of Afghans, including children, could die of starvation unless urgent action is taken to pull Afghanistan back from the brink of collapse, a senior United Nations official warned a few days ago, calling for frozen funds to be freed for humanitarian efforts. We can see that we are all in a bad economic crisis, and 99% of the people live below the poverty line, and there are a lot of problems. We saw that a few days ago, eight children died of starvation. World Food Programme Executive Director David Beasley told Reuters that 22.8 million people, more than half of Afghanistan's 39 million population, were facing acute food insecurity and marching to starvation, compared to 14 million just two months ago. South Korea loses restrictions and first step toward living with COVID-19. South Korea said it will drop all operation hour carbs on restaurants and cafes and implement its first vaccine passport for high-risk venues such as gyms, saunas and bars as it tries to live with COVID-19. Officials say the first phase will go into effect and last for a month, with plans calling for all restrictions to be scrapped by February. From November 1st, our community will take the first step of reactivate our normal life. However, this doesn't mean that the fight against the coronavirus is over, but a new beginning. Regardless of vaccinations, maximum 10 people in Greater Seoul and 12 people in other regions are allowed together. While private gatherings will be allowed with up to 10 people in Greater Seoul and 12 people in other regions regardless of vaccination status, but restaurants and cafes will keep a cap on up to 4 unvaccinated people per group. Visits to high-risk venues such as bars and nightclubs, indoor gyms, saunas and karaoke bars will require proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test result from within 48 hours. South Korea has launched its own vaccine app that it says protects user privacy through blockchain technology. Well, that's the news for today. Enjoy your holidays. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you.